Hi, my name is Warren Coulomb. I'm the Optical Systems Engineer here at Double Helix Optics. And today I'll be walking you through our new spindle squared uh, multicolor engineered PSF imaging system. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to show you the setup that we have for today. So we have kind of a standard inverted microscope platform, our spindle squared system, and then a scientific CMOS camera. Um, we'll be using this to walk through a few demos, um, namely, you know, multicolor imaging, multicolor engineered point spread function um, technology, um, and a couple other kind of splitter and combiner type imaging modalities. Before we get started with this, though, we'll uh, walk through in detail the spindle squared hardware, um, and to do that, we'll do it off the microscope body. Okay, so here we have our new spindle squared product, um, not mounted on the microscope and currently set up in a two channel mode. Just to give you all a rough idea of size here, we're looking at about seven and a half inches wide. Um, the main body is about six inches long and kind of in this extended mode. We're looking at maybe 12 inches uh, of total length before the camera. So to run through some features, um, what we're going to start with is the C-mount port adapter here. Okay, This is an adapter that can go onto the C-mount port of your microscope. And then after that, we're going to have our aperture blade assembly here. That's going to allow us to control the field of view. Um, to reduce it for different camera sizes um, and also reduce it from going from one channel mode to two channel mode. We then have our zoom assembly here. This allows us to adapt for different aberrations uh, from different microscope bodies and make sure that we're really putting that 4A plane right on the mask. Um, like I said, we're in two channel mode right now, so this is going to be our splitting optic. This can be a dichroic, an intensity splitter, a polarization splitter, whatever we want it to be. Okay. Just clicks in with magnets. And click back in nice and easily. We then have our reflected side, okay, which comes down this side of the, the spindle squared into our combiner optic here, which would then go on the camera. We have our transmitted side here, which does the same. Comes down, goes into the camera, okay? Along that path, we have our phase mask cartridges. Um, this one has a double helix phase mask in it right now. It can also be left blank. We then have secondary emission filters. Right now, nothing's in there. We have an alignment lens, which you can pull up to engage or push down to move out of the way. And that's repeated on the transmitted side here. All right, we got our phase mask. We have our secondary filter cartridge. And we have our alignment lens. Um, we have heavy use of magnets here, so everything should just click in and out of place. It should be really easy to swap different phase masks in, um, to move from an engineered PSF mode with a phase mask to a clear aperture mode without a phase mask. Um, a lot of versatility there. We have our two channel combiner here. This has a lot of different adjustment on it to get those two channels aligned really nicely. Um, we have our C-mount adapter here to go on to pretty much any standard um, scientific CMOS or other CMOS cameras. And those are the main features of our spindle squared module. Um, we'll switch back over uh, and get the system installed onto a microscope so you can see it in action. All right, so now that we've walked through some of the main features of the spindle squared, um, I've gone ahead and put it onto our microscope chassis. So you can see here we've connected to the C port on the microscope chassis with our adapter. Um, as I pointed out earlier, we have our aperture slits here um, to control the field of view that we see. We have our zoom mechanism here to adjust uh, for aberrations caused by different microscope bodies. We have our first bypass mirror to push us into the reflected channel where we come into our phase mask cartridge, our secondary emission port, 
Um, we have an alignment lens here that comes up and down. As you can see on the screen when I put that up, see the pupil plane and put it back down. We have our uh, secondary bypass mirror, which then puts us onto the camera. So, right now, I have us in clear aperture mode, so we just see the standard PSF of the microscope um, itself. Let me just get the settings adjusted a little bit here. Okay. So, with that, you know, we can see our tetraspect beads come in and out of focus, and just see our standard clear aperture PSF. So if I go ahead and I pull out our empty phase mask cartridge, nothing in there, and I instead put in our double helix phase mask cartridge, okay, and if you look at the screen, now we're going to get those double helix PSFs. So if I zoom in on those, see those, as I bring the microscope in and out of focus, are going to rotate around each other, okay? And that's how we're going to do that 3D localization. Uh, we can collect the angle, we can calibrate the system. Now, like I said, we have an alignment lens, so if I pull that up to put it into place, and I get our microscope settings set up nicely, we'll see a really crisp image of our face mask inserted into the pupil plane. And that's really our technology there. So we can pull that face mask out of place. And what you'll see is that with clear aperture, we have no phase being imposed at that plane. If I pull the, the blank cartridge out and put the face mask cartridge back in place, we now see the double helix uh, face mask. So that's kind of nifty. Um, we do have adjustment there to bring that face mask in and out of focus, and we use that along with our zoom mechanism here to bring the whole system into focus. Um, like I said, we also have a secondary emission filter here. Um, right now I have Psi 3 in there, but I can insert a blank if we just want to block the excess light from coming into the body. Um, I'll go ahead and put that back in place. So that's kind of the primary mechanisms that you'd use to either image in clear aperture in like a total bypass mode, or to insert one of our phase masks to use this system in a one channel engineered PSF mode. All right, so now I've got our spindle squared set up in its two channel mode. Um, and you'll notice that I have replaced the first bypass mirror with a different element. This is going to be um, a dichroic today, but it could be a 50-50 beam splitter, um, a polarization optic. It's really up to you. Um, and I've replaced the secondary bypass mirror with our combiner optic. Okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the reflected channel light path, pass it through our phase mask, a secondary emission filter, and then bounce it onto our combiner optic before it goes onto the camera. On the transmitted side, we're gonna come in, we're gonna bounce through our um, you know, phase mask here. We also have another secondary emission filter, and then we'll come onto the combiner optic. And what you can see on the computer screen is that we have two um, separate channels of these tetraspect beads in focus. Um, on the transmitted side, that's going to be our top side, um, and on the reflected side, that'll be our bottom side on the uh, computer screen. Right now I have them both set up as clear aperture, so let me go ahead and take out this empty face mask cartridge um, and replace it with our double helix face mask cartridge. Okay, just slides right in, connects with some magnets. And now on the screen, you should see that the double helix point spread function is on the lower half of the camera, that bottom side. Um, and as I come in and out of focus with the microscope, that PSF is going to rotate around itself um, and stay localizable through a nice extended range. Um, and that shape is what allows us to uh, get the 3D location with really good precision. 
um, and also extend the depth of field at the same time. So like I said, I have a secondary emission filter um, on each channel. So this is gonna be roughly a Psi 3 emission filter. And then on the transmitted side, I have roughly a Psi 5 uh, filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove our empty face mask cartridge from the transmitted side now and replace it with our Tetrapod mask. Okay, it's just gonna click in nicely. And now, if I get the lookup table adjusted a little better, you should see a Tetrapod on the top channel and a double helix on the bottom channel as we come in and out of focus. Let me just zoom up on these two PSFs here, these two beads, give you a little bit better view of that. So here we're roughly at focus. We'll come out of focus, get the shape, and then come back into focus and back out again. Let me zoom out, and we'll go to those same two beads, but on the reflected side, which has our double helix point spread function. And you'll see them rotate around each other. Okay. And this allows you to do you know, a lot of different experiments. You can run like a two color storm experiment this way with two different PSFs. They could be two of the same PSFs uh, with different colors. Um, or you could do say like clear aperture in one channel to get a nice wide field image while you're doing an extended depth tracking experiment in the other channel. Um, so there's really a lot of good possibilities that this enables. Um, I think I alluded to this already, but we have alignment lenses in both channels. Um, so I can just kind of pick these up, and if you look at the screen, you should see uh, our two phase masks here. So we have Tetrapod on the transmitted side, just make out its features there, and we have double helix on the reflected side, you can make out its features there. So having those built-in alignment lenses really eases the uh, alignment burden here. Um, and those are the, the main features that we have in our two-channel mode.